Hey everyone and welcome to 1.21 gigawatts, I am Peter, that is Connor, and this is our trailer talk show in which we assemble a bunch of trailers from the last week or so and we talk about them, we discuss them, and at the end of the show we'll pick our favourite of, of the show. So that is what we're going to do. It's actually been a few weeks, it's probably been the longest gap we've had between two of these. Um, just purely because if there's not enough trailers in a week worth talking about, we won't do one. We'll just let any couple of interesting ones that are maybe there, we'll just roll into the next episode. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's been a few weeks since the last one. but uh, Yeah, and now it's coming to you on a brand new day. Yes, yes, we're recording this now in the middle of the week, uh, which will be normal for the time being. Yeah, uh, I, I, at least for as far as we can see on the schedule. Yeah, um, just because it's an easier time of the week to record this right now. And yeah, and like I say, it doesn't mean there will be one next week necessarily, but we'll see. Uh, it was quite a few weeks for trailers, but uh, we seem to be back kind of in full swing with some interesting ones. So, without further ado, we will dive into this week's trailers. Starting with peak interesting. You give me shit for puns, and that was like... <laughs> Do you know what the worst part is? It wasn't meant to be a pun when I first thought of it. I just thought, you know, you know you... and then I realised, shit, it was. Halfway through saying it. It's worse than any pun I've ever said. It is. It is. I regret it. We're starting off with Detective Pikachu. Now, as someone who has never touched a Pokemon video game, nor watched a Pokemon television show, nor watched a Pokemon movie, that <laughs> I have no attachment to anything Pokemon whatsoever. If anything, I have a, a vague disdain for everyone not shutting up about them when I was in school and they were trading their stupid cards so with that well, said <laughs> how much do you hate it i don't even hate it it's just a weird trailer it's i i'm not gonna lie i love the insanity of it it it, it looks kind of like uh it looks kind of like the happy time murders just with less stick jokes which inherently makes it better sure i mean not it's having some it, it no no it's somehow more mature not having Melissa McCarthy instantly makes it better, might that I add. That too. But, I mean... I, Ryan Reynolds makes it better as well. He's been in some shite. His inclusion does uh, not, uh, is no, not wait, a sign of quality. He has, but he's also very, very likable. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. I don't know. This trail was just the right amount of insanity that I loved it. I'm like, How? How is this the first live-action Pokemon movie? How is this where we start? Are you telling me Pikachu is not normally a little Sherlock? Is that what you're, no, that what you're telling me? No, not at all. Never. I mean, I think they did a game like in the last couple of years, but it's new. Does he normally speak to like one person who can no. understand them? No, you know, you know that bit in the trailer where you know, that, that woman's just like, oh, Pika, Pika. Mm -hmm. That's all we've ever heard Pikachu do before in terms of uh, not counting the side spin-off games like the I think they were called the Dungeons games where they you know, they spoke to each other because it was just Pokemon in there. Okay, okay. But uh, to people, no, we just just hear Pika Pika. And so this is weird. He's helping the protagonist find the murderer of his, murderer of his father, and that's the the premise of the film. Is that he's working with the Pokemon, uh, in Poker City or whatever it's called. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure which city they were in. Actually, there were there, uh, there were there were a lot of nice references. To it, 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 it said at the start. The, 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 it did. The... I can't remember. I, I saw the poster to the Sinnoh uh, tournament. Um, his his plane ticket was to Lavender Town. Sinnoh was a region. Lavender Town was a, just a, you know a town in the the first games. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know the, these just iconic locations for for the games. Mm -hmm. There's just all these little fun nods. I, I, yeah, all of it's lost on me. Like I, I just. No, it's fair. Yeah. Uh, I'll be honest. There's a trailer coming up where everything's lost on me. Uh, oh, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like, I can't necessarily be that negative. But it doesn't look a terrible movie. It, it looks like a movie. It looks like a buddy cop movie, just with the Pokemon insanity. It looks like the... a kids' buddy cop movie that I'm probably not going to ever see. Oh, oh, I'm seeing this. You know, it, it looks like one of those movies where, okay, this looks like any other kids' movie that's just doesn't look terrible, but doesn't look that interesting either. 
Oh, fair enough. Well, that's what uh, I'm getting. Just from out of that. interest, as someone who you know has no attachment, what did you think of the designs of the Pokemon? No, the quality of the CG at points aside, just the just the raw designs and the the textures are what are really bugging some people. Uh, I thought Pikachu looked kind of furbish. <laughs> yeah, and... but I mean, some people are, are, are like expect him to be uh, rubber, rubbery sort of thing. Whereas, but why? You know, I don't know. Just be, just based on your pictures and anime, people are, for some reason some people think he's rubbery. But I mean, it's just, just for the right. He's always been described as an electric mouse. So I mean, hmm. uh, kind of makes sense. Interesting. I don't know. I I, I I had a blast with the insanity of the trailer because it is just throwing it at whatever you want at the wall and just seeing what sticks. I was playing my camera settings there for a second. I thought it looked a little bit too too blue. <laughs> I was I was fixing things. Um, auto weight balance was letting me down. Um, no nah, no. Nah, I, I, from anything I've ever seen of Pikachu, because he's the one that's in the front of the market and for Pokemon, a lot, ha- yeah, and has been since I was you know young. Um, I expected him to be furry. He looks furry. <laughs> yeah, some people are like, that's weird. But, uh, yeah. I, some, some people uh, are I, I thought the CG for a lot of the other Pokemon that you see glimpses of, though, looked a bit more rough. I agree. I'm hoping it's just kind of unfinished for a lot of those shots. Mm. Uh, I a... mean, obviously, you spend the most time on Pikachu anyway, because that's, you know, he's a main character. They, they look kind of like Scooby-Doo movie levels, where it's like, oh, they're supposed to be kind of fun and cartoony, so it doesn't really matter. We can get away with just being kind of weak. Yeah. No, I agree. I I think the CG wasn't great. Uh, I am hoping it. I don't need it to be amazing, you know. Like, you know, I don't. I don't need it to be, you know, Planet of the Apes level. But I would hope it's improved a bit before, between now and launch. Planet of the Apes level or go home. <laughs> I would be terrified of Pokemon at that at that level. Which tells you they've got a horrible design. It's the same thing with Mario. You imagine a real life like short fat man with that mustache and that outfit it's coming t- towards yeah. you, and you're like, "No, this is this is nightmare fuel." I I I wouldn't <laughs> say that they've got bad design. I would say they are excellent design for their art style. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I'm saying is that art Sometimes style it doesn't translate. That art style clearly is nightmare fuel if you actually put it in real world context. That's oh what yeah, I'm yeah. Uh, but that, that is I mean I think the full title is Pokemon Detective Pikachu I think they've put the Pokemon in front of it just to make it really obvious what it is as if Pikachu I think, wasn't I think they have but I mean no one's going to call it that are they this is so weird this is like it's just like like the first ever Superman movie being Red Sun or something like that <laughs> we're going to Red Sun as the first live action Superman that's what it feels like and I, I don't even know Pokemon that well but just from everything everyone's saying no about no because your standard Pokemon thing, you know, what all the shows are, what a bunch of the moves are, it's, you know, the, the trainer taking on the league, you know, taking on, you know, working through some gyms, catching some Pokemon, taking on the the uh, the, the league at the end of the, the region. That's the classic story that admittedly usually takes about 50 plus episodes of an anime with all the you know, usual padding. So I, I guess, you know, a two hour movie, that's probably too rushed. So and maybe they were aware of that and went, let's just do something else. Maybe? I don't but know. It's, it just kind of feels weird because it's like, uh, what, how how is this where you start? Lots of LSD in the, the boardroom. That's how, you, that's how it starts this way. Probably. Um, anyway, so moving on. We'll move on to something else that's more animated and that is Toy Story 4. Although this is a weird, it's an odd teaser that doesn't actually have any footage of the movie itself in it. It's a little short that kind of yeah. sets up that Toy Story 4 is coming. It's very self-aware. Yeah. Well, it's breaking the fourth wall. It's two characters talking about Toy Story as, as a movie. Yes. So it's these two little toys that are talking about, oh, there's going to be another Toy Story. And they start trying to remember Buzz Lightyear's uh, catchphrase and they can't get it right. And then eventually Buzz and Woody walk in and correct them. And they just rip the, the logic of it to shreds. Yeah. Infinity. You can't go to Infinity. And be- beyond Infinity? How does that make any sense? You know nothing about science, sir. <laughs> They're not wrong. And then it's like, yeah, Toy Story 4 is coming. Um... It was kind of met at the start how they were like, oh, wait, but they made three movies. Why is there a fourth one? There's going to be a fourth. And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here going, yeah, why is there a fourth? The third one was a perfect ending. It, it didn't really answer it, did it? It didn't. It just said, no, just be excited. There's a fourth one coming. So I'll just get over it. It's I mean, kind of the attitude. In my head, all I could see was that executive from, from uh, Square Enix saying, please be excited. 
um, on stage <laughs> at PSX from like two years ago. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, so not much to say really. The humor was cute. Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of a little excited for Toy Story Four. Just on the, the you know, just I'm still inherently excited for pretty much any Pixar film. Well, I'm not. I feel like the ship's kind of sailed for me on Pixar in terms of being hyped. Like, I, I was, I, what was the last Pixar movie I saw? I should see Incredibles 2, and I still haven't. But I loved Incredibles 2. I'll get to it, but the last Pixar movie I saw, I think, was Inside Out. See, there's been a few good ones. It was was uh, Dory before or after Inside Out. They were pretty close. <laughs> yeah, so you had that and uh, Good Dinosaur, which was not as good, but yeah. Was very different. I enjoyed the the the, the simplicity of that one. Uh, I've had mixed things on that one. Yeah, yeah. That that some people hate it. Some people really really like it. Mm. Uh, I think it's it's all right. It's it's, pre- it's one of my least favorite Pixar movies. It's not the very bottom. But that's that's Cars two, obviously. But Cars three was pretty great actually. Yeah, I've seen one or two though. I don't really want to watch one or two. <laughs> you want to watch one? One's good, and then skip two, and then three is pretty mm. great. I don't know. Not feeling it. Anyway, uh, moving on. Next up, we have Captive State. This is the second teaser for this. And we had a very, very vague teaser a while ago. This one's still pretty, like, abstract. It's not super, like, let's explain what this is. Uh, But it's still very much clearly about a a state that is being influenced by aliens. John Goodman's in there. And it seems to be about this small group of guys who become a bit of an uprising, a a rebellion, if you will. Um. And it seems very sort of low budget, down and gritty, and kind of street level, like how do we fight back kind of thing. But I mean, sure, there's some big shots of like a ship and stuff like that, but the actual core of the movie seems to be a bit more ground level. Yeah, you get a little cl- glimpse of the creature right at the end. Yeah. Um, it looked creepy. It did. Uh, I think it looks interesting. I don't know if I'm into it as a movie yet, though. Uh, hmm. It's It's kind of the the intrigue is is there so that's it's got something going for it at least yeah i'm intrigued i'm not sold but i'm intrigued yeah um not a lot to say though there's a lot of quick cuts a lot of quick uh quick moments a lot, a lot of like you know old school video distortion effects and like channel changing yes. effects and things like that yeah uh but it's going for a style and not if nothing else it's, it's got a very uh consistent style between this and the first teaser that they, they put out a while ago so mm. they're definitely building the market as we go, which is nice. It's nice that when the market kind of tells its own little story, just by yes. the way that they've they've put them out. Agreed. So that's that's nice. Uh, next up, we got a trailer for Leprechaun Returns. <sighs> I'm livid at this movie. I'm livid because we had Leprechaun and a vote for October, right for Screams After Midnight. For a franchise starting vote. And the winner of that, that vote was Hellraiser. So we did the first Hellraiser in October. And we're going to do the sequels. That was the point of the vote. Leprechaun lost. So I was like, okay, we're safe for doing Leprechaun for like a year at least. And then it turns out there's a new one coming in March. So guess what we have to do now anyway? We have to do all seven of the Bleeding Leprechaun movies. I'm not happy. No, no, you're not. I'm not gonna lie. This looks amazing in the worst possible way. I did. I, I like one moment in this. There's a moment where it looks like a solar panel is going to land on a guy. But when I say, but when we say land, it's not. It's not like a flat top of it. It's landing. It's like upright. It's the edge. It's gonna go through the through him. It's gonna cut him in half. I hope the visual effect is there to sell this because this will look. Oh, amazing. it's not gonna be because there's the there's the bit where you know where the leprechaun jumps out of the hat and it looks atrocious. Oh, it does. It looks bad. But, but God, I hope so. That moment looks good. The rest of it looks utter garbage. <laughs> like I said, it looks garbage in the best possible way. Wonder... It looks like I'm gonna have such a, I can have such a good time watching this. At some point, the, the main character mentions her mum. I wonder if they're implying that her mum is Jennifer Aniston's character from the first movie, if, if that's what they're doing. Uh, I've not seen any of them. She mentions how you know her mum left it locked in a well. Yeah, that's so what I was thinking. It's, it's I mean, either the end of the first movie or the end of the seventh movie, right? Oh, it's not the end of the seventh. The seventh was like a reboot kind of thing. Okay. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll be like the end of one of the, the originals. But, I mean, I've seen the first four before. I don't remember a lot of them, other than them being yeah. bad. But 
I'm assuming that that's a reference to Jennifer Aniston's character. Probably. Tim Tim has a soft spot, though, doesn't he? He does. Just, Tim loves the dumb things. I don't... I'm not looking forward to it. I'm not looking forward to it. I'm, I'm, I'm dreading it almost, actually, you might say. In fact, we need to record the first Leprechaun in the very near future. I, I don't know. I'm, I won't say it's going up in the near future because I, I don't know when they're got, getting put out, but... But uh, he has to watch it soon, and you you get to have the satisfaction that he will watch something he hates. Stupid, God damn it. The Irish were a mistake. You take that back. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, that's right. You're also part Irish. Yes, the Irish were a mistake. I I <laughs> I fully commit to that statement. <laughs> Look, say one more word, and I'll throw a potato at your head. <laughs> oh no! Let's <laughs> not, not get offensive, right? Let's <laughs> not get offensive. Um, do you know what? You've got the perfect beard and hair for a leprechaun outfit, though. I do I get it? You, you get you get a green top hat, and you you're you're, you're swimming a leprechaun. Yeah, yeah. I have two ready-made potential outfits. You got to get a little cauldron for your gold, <laughs> a little pot of gold. Be good, yeah. Um, It'd be easy, wouldn't it? Green jacket, blazer, you're yeah, fine. Um, it looks bad. It's basically yeah. it, it, like the, the humor of the leprechaun felt like it was just it, it was landing with a thud. Like I wasn't laughing at him or with him either. Or it was just kind of he's there. Oh, I can't wait to watch this drunk one night. <laughs> <laughs> he's got this really like fake over the top Irish accent. So good. It was like, I'm a pot of God, matey. <laughs> Whatever he's doing. <laughs> no idea. It's something like that. <laughs> Being legitimately offensive. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm like, oh, dear. Anyway, uh, that's Leprechaun Returns. Next up, we had Fighting With My Family. Now, it's funny. I didn't realise what this was going to be when I clicked on it because I didn't know what the title was. But I remember talking about this in the news at some point, right? That there was going to be a movie about Paige, the wrestler. And there was a point where I saw it started talking about wrestling, and I was like, yeah. "And it's this, this, this goth chick." I'm like, "Oh, oh, I know what this is." Yeah, and do you know what it was? Because it starts off with it's these kids, and they're watching like real footage of The Rock from the nineties, right? And I'm a bit nostalgic because I, you know, I was one of those kids essentially watching this stuff at that age, and. The, the you know the, the, they've got the the English accents and they're talking about how they want to like, wrestle and you see like glimpses of uh, Vince Vaughn who's like a recruiter and you see obviously uh, Nick Frost is the the dad the dad yeah and there's some jokes here or there about them fighting like and I, I did laugh a little bit I thought it was a funny joke at the start where Nick Frost comes in and goes what are you doing here because he's, he's you know the brother's got the sister on the headlock and he's like what are you doing to your sister don't do it like that hold your fingers like this now she's in trouble yeah that's just how you do it um mm. I thought it was funny. You know, because you think the dad's going to tell him off for fighting, but yeah. he's like, no, 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 don't fight properly. Um, so, but and there was a moment where it just sort of clicked. There was, like, oh, this is Paige, like, because because they don't say her name early on. It, they, no, they make a point of not saying it, don't yeah. they? Yeah, uh, because it took me a while to just for it to click who it was. It was like, oh, it's Paige. This is the Paige movie, which is so weird because she's like, I don't even know if she's thirty yet. And there's a so, mo- shall I find out how we'll old she? She is retired. I think she's probably about that. She's retired because she she had an injury, but she's not old. <laughs> like she's, she's twenty six. Yeah, I mean twenty six. I mean, the, the, that's pretty young to be having a movie made about you already. It's pretty retired as well. Uh, well, it is, but I mean, it's, it's yeah, yeah, athletic sport. Sometimes you just have to retire young. You do if something goes bad. Um, she's still in the business. She's still doing like uh, she's still a personality there. She's just not. I'll take your word for doing it. the actual. She's she's wrestling. one of the handful of wrestlers I couldn't name. Is that because she has the same name as your girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not. I've just she's one of those that I've just I've seen floated about on social mm. medias that I'm like, okay, I recognise her enough to know who she is. She was pretty, anything about her, but she was pretty good uh, when she was at her, at her peak, which is weird to say when she's she's only like twenty six. I'm talking about her peak, but um, not my, not my favourite lady wrestler by by any means. I don't think I could name another one. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I mean, I could only probably name like four or five wrestlers in total. So, I mean, I assume The Rock was one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got her, The Rock, 
Un- Undertaker was one, right? Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm kind of running out after this, to be honest. Yellow bandana. <laughs> you know this one. Come on. Biggest of the 80s. Was in a bunch I... of movies. Yellow bandana means literally nothing to me. Blonde mustache that goes all the way. I, I assume this you're, you're talking about Hulk Hogan. Yes. Right. Means nothing to me when you said yellow bandana. He's always still, wearing a yellow still... or red bandana. That's his thing. Was he? Yeah. I'll take your word for it. Always. Unless, except when he was a villain, then it was a black bandana, but that's a whole. <laughs> that's going to into nitty gritty. <laughs> Let's not do that. Um. Yeah, so this is so weird. It's a movie about wanting to get into the red wrestling industry and about how she makes it. And she's at you know a WrestleMania and the Rock's there, and it's it's based on relative truth. I mean, I don't know if this interaction happened. Um, there is a funny joke at the end where he, she gets the Rock to phone his dad or her dad because he's a big fan, and Nick Frost just doesn't believe that it's him. And then yeah, there's, him there's the a bit where he clearly does a he he does whatever his thing is. His catchphrase. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I get this is supposed to be okay. This is something that he says. Yeah, and I'm like, sure, just straight over my head though. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's doing his catchphrase, and it sounds obviously authentic because it's him. Um, and I, I, that's, that's what's so good about this is because The Rock's actually an actor who's actually you know quite good at it, but he's yeah. also a real wrestler, so you can actually have him play himself in this without. Because I'm pretty sure, like, if they got the guy who actually does Vince Vaughn's job, he probably wouldn't be that good on camera. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Just a thought. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Do you know what? Do you know what threw me at the end of this trailer? Yeah. Written and directed by Stephen Merchant. Yeah, that was the weird thing back when it was announced. Because like <laughs> obviously, Merchant's I doing didn't this. remember that, and that came on. I went, what? Um, which means the humor is probably going to be quite good. And it'll probably, probably is. I like Stephen Merchant for the most yeah, part. Yeah, it'll probably be worth a watch. Um, it's so weird though that Paige is the one that went. We might make a movie about her yeah. specifically. Like for me, I'm concerned there are going to be a lot of like you know jokes like that that bit with the rock there that just went over my head. I'm like I'm concerned that the, how much of the, those will be in the movie. I don't know. You had that concern with Glow, and you, you refused to watch it. But I'm I there almost nothing in Glow relies on you knowing anything about yeah, it. I just I'm not, I wasn't interested from the trailer, but this one here, like no, that's a big thing in the trailer. That joke at the so, you know mm. that's your big joke to end your trailer on. Well, no, because it, it works anyway. Because it, it, because the awkwardness of him doing that and then her going "I'm sorry" is the real joke. Sure. You don't have but to I, get but, the but, catchphrase to make it but, work. No, but here's the thing: I, I, the joke was ruined for me because I was spending an extra three or four seconds going, "What's what's he doing? What, what what's going on here?" Because I, you know, to you, he starts doing that, and you're immediately, you know, what's happening. You get what's going on. I'm having to. I'm a few seconds behind figuring it out. And, and you know, by the time the, the he's finished doing it, I'm I'm kind of there, but it's kind of the the pacing's all gone for me. Okay, I mean, <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I I, I can't yeah. I can't watch it not knowing. <laughs> no, exactly, and so but it's one of those things where I, you know, just the uh, comedy is all in the pacing. So, uh, are you even the bit when he does his other catchphrase where he said, "Doesn't matter what your name is," and he, he kind of like just chastises him for asking them a dumb question, and then as he's turning around and walking away. Uh, Paige just shouts, thanks, Dwayne. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah. no problem. I just there was a catchphrase in there? Yeah, it, it doesn't matter what your name is. That's, that was one of his things. He'd ask somebody what their name is, and they'd go, it doesn't matter. See, right over my head. Yeah. I, I literally didn't know this was a thing until you just... Uh, it, it didn't play like that in the trailer. I was just like, okay, it's a line. Yeah, but like I'm, I'm saying, the joke is thanks, Dwayne, at the end. Yeah, yeah, sure, that one. I'm with you on that bit, uh, but I didn't realise there was a catchphrase in there. Uh, but does it matter? I don't know. I feel like I'm missing. But as a thing, lot. though, it may just be like the couple of scenes with the Rock. Because I feel like you probably saw all of his scenes in this trailer. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Even though he's an actor and he obviously does a lot of movies, I I feel like for this one, you know, they got him for a few scenes because well, I think it... he I think he's producing it. Yeah, maybe they'd do I, more then. I, I think yeah. I, I think I saw him on Twitter mention that his company was producing it. Um, but I'm, I'm just wondering if like he's only got the few scenes for the historical you know moments yeah, where he was involved, and then it's like okay now we can piss off and go because it, it it works really well that they can watch the the footage from the nineties you know early on in the movie and then by the end they get to meet him and you know it's present yeah. day rock more or less. Um, I, I mean I think that scene that was taking place was like maybe four years ago, three years ago, but you know close enough that close whatever. enough you'll be able to stretch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
uh, it looks amusing. It's got some funny moments. It, it, it's weird watching a movie, a movie like this, and it's funny because there was such a like a mystique back in the day about like protecting the fact that it wasn't real. Uh, but now there's movies talking on TV shows where oh, let's, let's learn how to do it. <laughs> let's learn how to do the fake moves and how to, you know, not get our necks broken. I, I didn't realize it was such a big deal before. Oh, back in the day, yeah, it's called kayfabe. Yeah, that's like the the fictitious right. Okay, like barrier, like. If if someone says something's kayfabe, they're saying it's the it's it's the it's within the fiction of the right. Of what the, does kayfabe stand for? What, what, where does that come from? I have no idea where the word kayfabe comes from. It's just the word. That's what you. Uh, well, I mean, you, I'm yeah. just fair enough. If you don't know, but I've, I imagine I it's know. got to have come from somewhere, right? It probably it's got does. To store but... behind a word like that. But that's what it's called. It's called kayfabe, um, and people say kayfabe is dead because everyone's in on it. Everyone knows now. Um, everyone knows. Sure. It's, everyone knows it's a, a pantomime and. That's okay. Cause that's what it is. It's fine. Um, yeah. And that's that's what that's what we go. Uh, the current storytelling isn't so hot. Uh, I've barely watched anything in the last like two years because it's been kind of rough. Yeah, even, though, even though there's a lot of people involved that I do quite like, that that it's just everything's ruined by bad writing uh, or booking, as they call it in the business. They call it booking. Of course. I'm teaching you terms here. They call it booking. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, this is in one out here, in one ear out the other. There's kayfabe, there's a shoot, there's a work shoot. Um... <laughs> <laughs> can, can, can the people tell I have never watched a single minute of wrestling? Technically, this is the thing though. Kayfabe and shoot aren't things you would learn from watching it necessarily. That, that's things you learn from talking to other people about it. Because yeah, my, the, the extent of my wrestling knowledge comes from when I was maybe nine. I had a couple of friends into it. And they would, and I would, you know, I picked up the odd thing here or there. That they, but then, you know, by the time I was, uh, you know, eleven, uh, nothing, no, no one that I knew. Hmm. And then, in the last three, four years, I don't know, you know, you and Matt talk about it quite a bit. There's a uh, one, one of my favorite bits of humor from from Glow, actually, uh, just in terms of the wrestling itself, is when they're really shit to begin with and they're trying to do like some normal little things that you always see in wrestling matches and it looks ridiculous and stupid. Um, and, you know, even to someone who doesn't watch it, you get that this looks really... Sh- like, if you were watching this, this wouldn't pass for real at all because they're just kind of slowly, you know, moving into it and, like, instead of slamming someone down, they'll slowly place them down because they're too nervous sure. about hurting them. Uh, I wonder if there's maybe some humour like that in here. I don't know if there will be, but I like that stuff. On it Glow. doesn't look like there will be in this because it seems like, you know, the pair of them are, you know, all into it from the start, right? They still have to be trained properly, though, when they... Oh, no, no, yeah. they do, but because they're already... You know, they, they were actively, you know, fighting with each other. They were quite up mm. for it already. So maybe you'll get it from the other little characters in the group, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but I can't see it coming from, from them. Yeah. yeah. I wonder, I wonder how far it goes into her career, actually. Like, does it get to the point where she's actually in front of a large audience, like, doing her own matches, you know? Mm. How far does it go? I can't see it going all up to the way to her retirement, but who knows? I mean, uh, here's a question that I, c- I can't answer. Uh, the, the actress. Uh-huh. What, what do you think in terms of playing her? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny because, I, I mean, I don't really, I don't know if I've seen much of Paige not be in character, if that makes sense. Right. So it's like what she's really like when she's with her brother and, you know, when yeah. she's behind the scenes. I mean, I don't actually know 100%. I, I figured you'd have seen some interviews and stuff here or there. I mean, I probably have a little bit, but not. No, fair enough. You know, not not, not to any extent to say, oh, that's what she's like. Um, but basically, once I realised it was Paige, I'm like, oh yeah, she's, they've got her dressed as Paige. She's got the dark hair. She's got the the the. the... <laughs> that was it. It was the the just the rest general wrestling talk at the start, and yeah. then like, hang on, this is a goth chick. And then the lip piercing is the other one. This is those two details yeah. kind of stick out, and it's like, oh, it's Paige. It's like, yeah, it's like, oh, I get what this is. Yeah, and no, no doubt they'll have a real entrance music when they finally give her one, and the that, that, and that's probably gonna be a big deal. I imagine to a young wrestler when they finally get their own custom music that someone wrote, wrote for them is a big moment. It's like, oh, it's my music. Sure, I Joe, you know I'm surprised wasn't treated as a big moment in this trailer, given that they were hiding it for so long. Is them saying a name? Yeah, it was just it was when they were saying, oh, who who's the one selected to come to Florida with me? Paige. That's yeah, it. <laughs> but I thought it was gonna. With the way they were hiding it for so long, you I thought, thought it was going to be a big, yeah. yeah, I thought that would be the big moment to end on. But then, eh, was whatever. Yeah, you could probably just end. You could probably end it with the ring announcer, maybe like on our like going down the ring with our first match, like have the ring announcer going, coming from blah 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 blah. It's Paige, yeah. and then that's 
yeah, yeah. Cut and to avoid title. saying a name the whole trailer up till that. Yeah. What's weird though is that so much of it seems to focus on like her and then her brother being upset that he's not picked as well. Um yes. But I feel like once it got to her going to Florida and being in the arenas and doing the actual wrestling, I feel like it almost kind of seemed to leave that behind. But that could just be a trailer thing. More than... It could be. Uh, I mean, if you want to be a cynic, you could say it could be a movie of two halves. But yeah. It's, it sometimes can work, but more often than not, just feels, you know, a bit janky. Um, but I mean, there's no get, no reason to, to suspect that is the case yet. What what I'm curious about though is that when he does get to NXT, which is the sort of the the junior kind of up and coming thing, yeah. Um, will we see actors playing other wrestlers who were there at the same time she was? I assume you kind of have to, at least yeah. a little bit. Yeah, because then I'm like, okay, so how many other like wrestlers do we get? Uh, or, or do they get away with going, oh, they're just in there for a match? We can just have the real wrestler play that part. Because I'm not doing that much actual acting. Yeah, it could be. Um, I don't know. That's it. I mean, some wrestlers do some acting now. The Marine Six is coming out apparently, and several wrestlers are in that. That's that's a franchise where the lead role's been recast a couple of times, but it's always been a wrestler because it's a WWE film. Right. Okay. And they're on the sixth one apparently. I did it's, not realize. It's like the Scorpion King. I just won't die despite the fact that no one cares about it. Every so often, you'll check it and be like, "Wait, there's been another fall." <laughs> That's basically it. <laughs> uh, although Becky Lynch is in the new one, and she's a much better Irish person than you, just for the record. I don't know who that is. Yeah. yeah. And, although, just, just for the sake of confusion, Connor's not actually Irish. He just comes from an Irish family. There's a difference. There is a difference. He's very much English. Yes. Much to your disdain. Yes. Uh, but hey, so that's fighting with my family, which oddly got a lot of time. Uh, <laughs> Didn't it? So moving on, we had Vox Lux, which is Natalie Portman's not Portman's Natalie Portman's um, essentially Lady Gaga biopic, but without calling it that. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, that's kind of what it is. It looks like she's a very eccentric singer who wears ridiculous outfits, um, who's very, very uptight, and also seems to inspire extreme extremism in some form. Yes, and also it looks stylish as shit. It looks very stylish. Uh, there's a very there's a very sudden cut to a quiet hallway at one point uh, yeah. for comic effect, and it actually is quite effective in the trailer. It is. There's there's a shot of you know just a car going down this tunnel. You know, we're, we're, you're kind of in between the headlights as the camera, and it's just yeah you know, maybe three or four seconds of it just going down this this lit tunnel. It's gorgeous. Portman's acting looks pretty good. Uh, the yeah. style, the directing looks even more impressive. And I think the trailer is pretty well paced and put together the way it kind of ramps up. Yeah. It, you know, it goes relatively quick and then slows right down and then starts to speed up again towards yeah. the end. Uh, so it, it stands out in terms of a piece of editing as a trailer goes. It got me into it. I'm definitely down to watch this movie now. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely intrigued. I'm intrigued to, to see how it pans out. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's Vox Lux. Next up, we get a trailer for Maine. Uh, nothing to do with Stephen King, and you'd be forgiven for thinking it, it was to do with Stephen King. <laughs> because, you would, yes, because everything about me jo- ever made Stephen King. Yes, and notably, this and Vox Lux are both in the same aspect ratio, aren't they? Do you know? I never noticed Vox Lux's aspect ratio. This was in one six six, right? Yeah, 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 I think they both are. Was was Vox Lux in one six six as well? I never yeah. noticed. Um. I think it's because that was so dark. I never noticed where the edge of the screen was. That's true. I just I noticed that because because they were back to back in the list that you gave me, and I was uh, like, yeah. huh. Now, so uh, this is a this is a sort of a drama about two two hitchhikers and campers, um, who are kind of in love, although she won't really admit they're in love. And yeah. That's basically the movie. <laughs> it's it's them traveling, being kind of in love, then being kind of awkward because. The, the, of a romantic drama romantic drama uh i think the reason why i i, I said no this is going to end the show is mainly because of how the trailer's put together because it has this interesting editing style i think it does uh hell of a direction yeah the way it uses audio because it starts off with this like tapping and it's not until a couple of you, know, you get to that actual shot of what's going on after a quite a few shots you see it's this the the female character is like tapping on a pot you know she's actually yeah. sort of drumming with it um, but it has this very naturalistic kind of sound to it until the music kicks in, like maybe halfway through. Yeah. 
but it's it's very downbeat and it looks like it, it looked kind of like it could be the, in the same kind of vein as something like before sunrise mm. it looks like it could actually be very dull and it could be just a, a fantastically edited trailer it does or it could be a beautiful movie if the if the style lives up to the style of the trailer i could see this being a really good little drama yeah um, all, all down to the, the the performances and the directing and that kind of thing. But if if this if the trailer's hiding what's otherwise a really dull movie, then it'll be dull. It possible it's possible to tell it until reviews come out and until we can actually see it. But yes, um, but I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued enough from the style because it's the, the premise itself is whatever. The premise is just a really simple little thing. Yeah, you've seen it before, just in yeah. premise. But it's the style that sells it. So it's called Main. Oh, I did see a lot of people complaining that it clearly does not look like Main. Um, I wonder if the it's not the location of Main. I wonder if Main's important to like the the motivation of one of the characters, but it's not where actually from where, they're, where yeah. they're going. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But it's not where they're actually hiking through right now. Yeah, because uh, people were saying that the you know the topography was all wrong. Like this, this, oh, the horror. This is clearly not Main for X, Y, and whatever reason. <laughs> anyway. Um, Next up, we had a trailer for a Netflix movie that's actually coming later this week. This is coming on 16th of November. It's called Cam. And I remember talking about this when it popped up in the news a while ago. And yes. it sounded intriguing, uh, an interesting premise for a horror movie. It's about a cam girl. Uh, and if you're very innocent and don't know what a cam girl is, it is Google it. You can, you can Google it and just have a look for yourself if you like. Uh, but warning, it's not suitable for work, just <laughs> FYI. Uh, it's a bit responsible. Yeah, it's be responsible. Um... But it's you know, cam girls are, and you get cam guys too. It's, it's not it's not exclusive to to girls, but you basically it's kind of like a live streaming. Th- I think Twitch, but for sex shows <laughs> essentially, uh, where you, you tip and you comment with the person on the camera, and then they'll do do things, and that's the gist of it. And I'm explaining that because I think it's important to understand what that is to, before you talk about the plot of this, because. The character in this is very determined to, like, you know, get high, high in the rankings. I want to be top fifty and things like that. And you see, you know, glimpses of her you know, on her shows doing spankings and, and whatever else. And then this is like a horror thriller where all of a sudden she appears online, but it's not her. She's watching this and she's like, "Who's that? She looks just like me." It's like a copy of her. Yeah, is doing at its own first show. She thinks that because she can't log into her account. Yeah. And so she phones them up going, oh, it looks like you're just playing a repeat of one of my old shows. Mm. She just thinks that, oh, it's just a, a video I did before. Yeah, because there's nothing weird happening where she'd assume that that's different or something I wouldn't right. have done. Yeah, it's just like, exactly. Oh, that, doesn't, that, she doesn't necessarily remember it, yeah. but... That, that, could, have been like, a, yeah, probably did that, that. could have been a random show four months ago that I just don't remember. Whatever. Right. And they're like, no, no, we, we, we don't do that. Yeah, this is you're live. live. Yeah. <laughs> At one point, she actually, because one of the things is you can do like camera to camera where someone will pay to talk to you, right? And that's what mm-hmm. happens in this. She, she, we see like clips of her doing that with other people with like a guy talking to her. But in this, she uses this to talk to whoever this copy of herself is. And it's like, a, you know, it's like, and she starts yeah. saying things to her. It's creepy. And she's like, no, how, who are you? How have you got my life? Like, stop this. It has this fantastically gorgeous, surreal element to it. It does. It's very weird, and I I think part of part of what I think is so weird about it, and it's something that I love about really low budget. I'm I'm thinking of the movie Pi. If anyone's ever seen Pi, the 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 early Aronofsky movie, is that a lot of that movie's from one room. It's like this one, like you know, computer like nut jobs room. Yeah. And there's something about the main set of this movie being her one room that she's got all dressed up because it's meant to be the backdrop to her her, her cam shows, right? It's all yeah. got the neon light. It's all kind of bright and vibrant. And, but that's that's the, the set and that's where she is. It's on her own little world. Yeah, and, that seems to be where most of the movie will take place. And I feel like if this is good, and it might be, part of what this might be is it might be all very, a, a very psychological film about who she is and what she's going through, right? And that the copy will represent something is a part a, a, apart from just being something creepy. That's the plot of the movie. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that we maybe neglected to mention is what sets this off. Yeah, you know, when the copy appears. Yeah, she starts doing more extreme things. She does like a fake death. She sort of pretends to slit her throat, but she's got like a prosthetic to actually you know slit and pour out yeah, blood. Looks pretty good to be fair. Yeah, it looks good. And then, and then you see her rip off the fake neck, and it's like, oh, it was just all a trick. It was a. Yeah. Um, because someone you know paid for that. You know, I want to see you kill yourself. Um, 
and it, I, I think the obvious interpretation, just having watched the trailer, is that she sold herself, you know, literally in this case, for 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 goals. Yeah, she's given think, her, up her, her soul, if you will. I think there's a danger that it can come across a bit demonizing. Sure, to, yeah, to the actual cam girls, yeah. Yeah, I think I think there's a danger it could come across of, oh, look how bad this is that you're doing this. Uh, I, I mean, I think just, again, from watching the trailer, I would say that as long as they make it clear that it's because she goes over this line is why it's yeah. bad, not not just because she's doing it in general, um, yeah. then it's not a big deal. It's like, okay. Uh, I agree. Like, like anything, yes, if you go to the point where you're starting to like kill yourself or you know fake kill yourself for money. It's probably unhealthy, yeah. Yeah, it's probably unhealthy. Not yeah. counting, you but know, when it's just part of a movie or something like that. Honestly, it has such a style to it that, you know, um, that I, was, I was really into it. It was cutting around a lot, it was. And it's coming out on Friday. I'm, I'm tempted to try and get to this one soon when, yeah. it, when it launches. Um, oh, yeah, because, like, her room that she's in, it has this uh, the, this pink glow to it. Yeah. It's the lighting setup she has. And that really adds to this surreal feel throughout. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm into it. I'm into it. Do you know what's funny though? One of the quotes, there's a few quotes that come out, I didn't read them all, but one of them said something along the lines of, oh, it's a Hitchcocky level of thriller. And I actually laughed a little bit because I went, it feels weird to me that you're, you're you're calling a movie about a cam girl, be, you know, with like a weird supernatural twist as being Hitchcocky. Just because the idea of a cam, a webcam yeah. of itself, didn't exist when Hitchcock was alive. Just yeah, weird even though we haven't seen it yet, we can't judge. That might be accurate. It may be, yeah. <laughs> like, that could be true. I mean, someone believes it to have said that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it, it just made weird, me laugh yeah. because it's like, really? I mean, if you're if you're talking about you know a, a thriller where someone's following someone, I'm like, yeah, that's Hitchcocking because that's the sort of plot he would have done, right? But yeah. this is about cam girls and technology and like like a demon on the internet <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. You know? uh, it may not be a demon, but I'm just you know. I am intrigued though. I am. I, I do want to check this out. I, I am curious. I'm into. I'm. I'm in, I do for watching Cam. I. I do hope it's as good as it looks. Yeah, I'm. I'm intrigued. Uh, it, it has this kind of low budget roughness to it, but it, and I, I mean that in a good way. It's got a bit of a charm to it. It, it doesn't look too slick, and I actually kind of like that for this. Yeah, it's um, not overproduced. So no, I'm looking at Cam. I wonder if it falls into Scream's territory. I wonder if this is one I'll be sending to Tim. Hey, this. Let's do I think this is a, a Netflix original. Mm-hmm. I know Netflix's uh, genre listing can be sketchy, but see what they put it of the of their yeah. own content. If they call it a horror, you know, may, maybe that's fair grounds. Yeah, don't know, don't know. I think it's too late for us to do it this weekend, though. So I don't know. I'll mm. see. I'll, I'll I'll see what it is. See if I've got time to watch it and. I'll do something solo if you happen to find time to watch it, which seems a bit slim, but seems slim, but I do kind of want to. Mm. Oh, pardon me. But that's Cam, so that's interesting. And speaking of Netflix movies, we have another Netflix original. This one's a little bit further out. This is coming in December. Yes. This is called Bird Box, and it's a Sandra Bullock film, which I heard someone say is Netflix's scariest movie yet. I'm just trying to think of what that's measuring up against. Like, if they ha- if they had a notably scary, that is a. I don't know. Um, <laughs> in terms of just the the, the yeah. horrorish things they've had, Apostle, right? That was that was one they had a few weeks ago. That oh, true, meant yeah, to be pretty good. True. I haven't watched it yet, but yeah, that's that's, that's true. Yeah. Um, Gerald's game is one, of course. Um, but so I will critique the trailer in this one a little bit. Um, I I think there was there was an odd thing with this trailer for me where. I felt like they didn't explain what the concept of the movie is well enough early on, where I understood what was happening. It wasn't until I agree. quite late on where she's explaining to her kids that they can't take off their blindfolds, where I kind of got what was going. Where I kind of got okay, right? They can't see whatever this is. Whatever, whatever's causing people to go crazy, it's it's through sight, right? Yeah, but I didn't understand. It. I was like, why the blindfold? I get that it's clearly for a reason. But it did a really poor job of communicating yeah. that to me as but, to why. Because there's stuff in the middle where, you know, because it starts off she's pregnant and then there's a time jump clearly in the movie where she's got two kids. And she's with, like, you know, John Malkovich and a bunch of, like, sort of, like, survivors. And they're all holed up in a building. You can see that they've, they've, they've put, like, stuff all over the windows, right? So no one can see in or out. And I was like, okay, fine, whatever. That's just so that no one can see they're in there because there's a villain or something. There's zombies, there's, there's monsters, whatever it is. And 
then they have to leave and they're putting on the blindfolds and there's even early on there's like quick cuts to them wearing blindfolds and i'm like what's the blindfold thing what's going on and yeah I, I didn't get it either there's a bit where they're in the car and you know all the windows are blacked out yeah and they're just using this parking sensor and then at the end of the scene they reach to pull up their blindfolds and i went but what's going on here i just it, didn't understand and it was when she was talking to the kids and she was and this is an effective little speech where she's saying hey if there's something in the forest if you hear something you tell me and if this happens you do this and if this happens this, but whatever you do whatever you can never do is you never remove that blindfold and i'm like okay i get it whatever's happening it happens because it will affect them through sight that's a cool concept i actually like that concept the trailer just doesn't communicate it early I, enough i assume this will be a lot better in the movie i you know i would assume as well yeah i assume because we'll learn it relatively naturally as it goes as they as, as she learns it and we'll kind of get the hang of yeah, that yeah because there's that crazy stuff at the start where she's like leaving the hospital and there's this random person bashing her head against the wall or whatever right. and... but yeah i think it's a poor trailer yeah I, I think it has some really effective individual moments that make me go "Ooh, i might like this movie based on that car scene based on the them i agree yeah. the speech that she gives to the kids based on those moments i think i might quite like this but I think the trailer overall is quite bad because it does a poor job of conveying what the the, the what premise the point is. is. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, but Bird Box is what it's called, and that's coming in December. It's one of these ones that are doing a, a limited theatrical run as well. Um, yes, December twenty first, I believe this one was. Christmas treat. <laughs> so there's gonna be a, this will be me and Carl reviewing this at Christmas. So no, no, it's it. true because I, I was watching this with with the girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, watching the trailer last night, and she went. This is their Christmas movie, is what she blurted out at the end of it. Uh, there, there actually was a trailer this week that I didn't put in the list for a, a Vanessa Hudgens movie where she swaps with a princess who looks the same as her and it's set at Christmas. Yeah, see, I feel if you'd put that one in, she'd have been a lot happier. Basically, my rule is that if it's something that only Paige will be excited about out of the three of us, I don't put it in the list. That's a pretty good rule because I'm okay with that. <laughs> Uh, surely she was excited at the wrestling one. She was like, "Oh!" Was... She found it really weird because she said she she never experiences her name in movies and TV. Well, there you go, representation. She's fairly got one. She got a page. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Don't because now she'll go and start like uh, watching old stuff of the wrestling, being like, "Oh, <laughs> that I got to experience more." I, I, plenty of Peters in movies and TV for me to. There, there is a lot. Yeah, uh, and reasonable number of Scottish people, I'd say, in the last. There's enough. There's too many. There's not too many. Oh, oh, oh come on. How many English people are in, like, American movies and TV? A proportionately accurate amount. <laughs> Piss it off. There <laughs> is far more. There's a ridiculous amount. Correct amount. No, piss off. Actually, piss off. <laughs> There's tons of them. Um, you like, cock watches. You show up everywhere. Um so that's bird box the last trailer of the week we've got to talk about is a horror film called the prodigy now, this is an interesting one because it's, it's a possession film by the looks of it uh mm. but the trailer presents it in a very specific way where it's, it's a trailer of two halves yeah the first half is a hypnotist talking to this young boy and basically just try to get him to think about his past who he is blah 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 and then you know after like a good like 30 40 seconds it gets to the kind of the point where he's like okay You've now you're now hypnotized. You've receded. I am no longer talking to whatever his name is, Timothy. All right, <laughs> Timothy Vergulish. Um, I'm no longer talking to Timothy. I'm talking to the being that is now residing in Timothy's body. I'm like, oh, okay, all right, okay, see what you're doing here. I mean, sure, mm -hmm. I've seen hypnotism in movies with possessions before. It's not, a, you know, it's not an original thing. But presenting it like this in the trailer is kind of interesting. Okay, I thought it was shot really stylishly. This this opening half, so yeah. you know, the way it cut back and forth to the metronome, it had that slow tracking in, and then the slow tracking out later. Well, what I'll give it credit for is that I kind of like a the first half is like that, and then the second half is essentially just the one scene, the one moment. Now. You could debate if the scene, the moment itself works for you or not. Yeah, but uh, that's that's where it fell flat for me. But I appreciate that it wasn't a lot of quick cuts and like big scary things are happening all over the place, CG thing happening. It was a simple little thing that I saw coming. I saw, you know I saw I saw what the, the the thing was going to be before it happened. Yeah, but it kind of worked in a simple enough way where I was like, okay, all right, that was fine. I think I liked the first half i thought it was stylish and what it was doing like you know i've seen it before mm. but uh, yeah, i thought it was shot well the second half you know that, that scene in, in the hallway just felt generic to me unfortunately i didn't feel it had any of that extra 
pizzazz that the, that the first half did. I think I liked it because it wasn't just a jump scare. There was a jumpiness element to it, but it was kind of like, you know he's coming, and you know that because the thing is, is that the little boy's across the hall, right? down. It's dark at night time, he's at the end of the hall, and the mum says, here, come, come to mum. And he starts running towards her, and he goes through like, the really dark shadow, right? You don't see him for a second, and you know that it's going to be like something else by the time he comes through. Yeah. And it's like a fully grown man who's like naked, <laughs> who like grabs her. And I saw it coming, and I think it's effective because I expected it. I, I, I think, b- bizarrely, because I expected it to change into something more horror a to, to use a, more of a, a demon. Yeah. Because I expected it, it worked because of the, the build-up to it. Whereas I think if it had tried to pull something up more suddenly, I'd have been annoyed at it for just being a bullshit jump scare. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think... I, I agree in that sense. It's not really a jump scare. It plays it too slowly. Um, but I don't know. They just That scene didn't work for me. It felt just a bit generic. The, the horror of it didn't land. Whereas I liked the first half. Uh, so the second half fell flat for me. I think, I think the scene worked well enough for me. Uh, I'm not convinced the movie's going to be good. I can still see this being a really generic, you know, possession movie yeah. by the time it's all said and done. But the trailer didn't just do the typical trailer thing. It did its own little thing. I liked that the, the the scare at the end had a little build up. It wasn't just the one quick little thing, and the first half was effectively put together. So mm. it felt like a well put together trailer at least. Yeah, it wasn't. It was definitely not the worst trailer. But hey, seen seen far far worse in terms of possession trailers. So with that said, that brings an end to the trailers of the week, which means we'll pick our favourite of the bunch. Yeah. Okay. And all right, just say Detective Pikachu and get it over with. Well, no, no, going to... that's the movie that I'm most excited for. I won't, I don't know if I'm going to say it's the best trailer though. Okay. It's it's. It got me excited for the movie and went, oh, I need to see this. But Let me guess, either Vox Lux or Cam. Maybe, yeah, no, that, that, that's yeah. the two it's down to for me. Or maybe Main, I suppose you could argue as well, I think. I could argue Main it has, it has a strong case just for the art of the trailer. I think, uh, I think I'll go with Cam because it has the combination, I think, of kind of surprising and interesting because it's a little bit yeah. different. Uh, but I also want to see the movie. That's fair. Maybe maybe, I'm, maybe the most out of the whole bunch, to be honest. That's fair. No, it definitely got me really um, interested. You know, that's coming from when we're recording this. It's like a couple of days. Yeah. It's like, oh, cool. Um, I think I'm going to go with Vox Lux. Uh, I was really impressed with it. Uh, because I th- this is one that I'd, I'd known that was coming out. I remember hearing about it a while back. And, you know, I remember hearing people talk about, you know, Natalie Portman's performance is, is fantastic. And it does look fantastic. But... I wasn't expecting it to have such a style to it and such strong direction. That's not something I'd, I'd seen mentioned, whereas this trailer made it look like it really does. And maybe that's just clever trailer making. It's, it's possible that it's a fantastic trailer editor that's, that's pulled that out. But I'm hoping that it's not. And if it is, then it deserves this anyway for just pulling that off. Yeah. Um, and... And only the worst trailer is probably Bird Box for this confusing, even though the movie seems like it may be quite yeah, good. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be a bad movie. I mean, it could be a bad movie. Yeah, I, just don't th- I don't think it will be, but I think it's a bad trailer. Yeah, yeah. The, the worst movie from this bunch is probably going to be Leprechaun Returns, but I mean... Yeah, yeah. You, you never know. <laughs> Things could surprise us. It'll be the worst movie, but not necessarily the one I have the least, the, the worst time watching. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yeah, Detective Pikachu is yeah, that's that's the worst one, sure. <laughs> I get what you're saying. Uh, all right, so that is trailer talk for the episode then. So thank you very much for sticking around and watching. Uh let us know what your favourite trailer of the week was, or what you thought of all the trailers indeed in the comments. Uh like, subscribe, all these other stuff. You can find links to the trailers, of course, in the description if you want to watch them yourself. I should really say that at the start, but I mean I feel like you know for next time. <laughs> you know for next episode. <laughs> So unprofessional. It's basically my thing. Uh, so if you want to support the show and the channel, head over to patreon.com slash TV, and you can do that over there. Uh, by all means, if you want to go to Twitter at mail underscore fuzz, if you want to like suggest a trailer for the next episode that you think we might ignore, right? I- I'm not going to promise that we'll do it, but... No, it's true, because sometimes, I don't I know, Pete's the one who he-, he gathers the trailers, and 
he looks through them, but you know, some things slip through the cracks, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Some things slip through the cracks, and then there's some that I just don't do. I don't put in the list because I just don't think they're interesting enough. Um, you know, typically when you look at the list of trailers that we we do for an episode, there's usually at least another fifty or sixty percent that I watched to check, yeah. and then and just said, went nah. Yeah, no, uh, we're not going to do those ones, but. Um, so I might feel that way with whatever you'd suggest, but by all means, if you think we're going to miss something, especially the the, the little or weird, weirder ones that are more likely to be missed. And also, you know, if there's multiple people requesting a trailer that you would have ignored, maybe that's worth mentioning, you know, it's worth putting in just to see why you were less interested in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so by all means, uh, could do it in the comments as well, I suppose, if you want. Um, but yeah, that is that. Is that. Uh, yeah, so like, subscribe, usual things. Uh, support us on patreon.com slash TV if you want. Uh, but otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. Uh, we always appreciate it. Um, there will be a moving news. That there's, there should have been one uh, at the end of the weekend there, but uh, scheduling conflicts and delays yes. c- c- got it pushed. But um, we will have another moving news uh, at its usual time, give or take. Uh, at the end of the week starting next week so look forward to that but otherwise that is us so thank you once again for watching and listening we always appreciate it keep watching movies guys and we'll see you next time